Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw. I'm here at the Shore Club in Turks and Caicos, and I'm here with the guy who developed this wonderful resort, as well as a number of others here in Turks and Caicos. It's Stan Hartling, who, uh, who is the CEO of Hartling Group. And we're going to talk to Stan about um, the resorts here, about how they handled COVID, and a whole lot more on Insider Travel Report. Let's talk a little bit about the Hartling Group and what it what it was. When did you start it? Yeah, we started in 1995 in Turks and Caicos, and I can tell you it was a very different Turks and Caicos that we arrived to. Uh, I arrived to, and uh, you know, I tried to get it out of my mind. I came down for a strange reason, an offshore tax seminar of all things, and I just couldn't get it out of my mind. I, I always rely on gut feel. I kept going back, coming back to the island, going, and and uh, the second or third visit, we ended up buying the land for the first resort, and I just you got sucked in, right? That, that sucked good. in. I got in the vortex. You know, I was Canadian, so I was just glad to be warm. <laughs> Now, what is your background, actually? You know, I'm a Heinz 57. I, I've been a musician. I've been an art student. I became an, a, an accounting major and then into a property developer. So there's a whole lot of people running around. Up in that That's a good thing. A little renaissance <laughs> man, right? Left brain, right brain. But yeah, I mean, literally a very diverse background. But ultimately, the property development was something that I've wanted to do since I can even think of. You know, I just love the physical creation side of that. It's, it's, it's literally a high for me. I love it. Now, when did you first start building your resorts and where? Because you have two now uh, on Grace Bay and one here on, on Long Bay. Then. Correct, correct. It's so Long Beach, I don't remember. Long yeah, Long Bay Beach. So, uh, look, you know, we started experimenting with this concept here uh, being a boutique hotel size, but also a condo hotel, mm -hmm. and but taking it at a very serious level. And what I'm proud of and what we've done is that we've really done a progression. It's been a real, if you look at Project 1, Project 2, Project 3, there's refinements and confidence that come into each of those products, and and I and it shows. We we are probably a little unique in that industry in that we design these to be resorts, mm. and then we flip backwards and say, how do we sell the real estate within them? And yeah, because it does seem to be a, a big model here. Not that it isn't a model at all in hospitality of right. having condos and 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 then turning them into resorts or vice versa. Right. Every hotel is built with the idea of having some condos, and then of course you can rent them out. Right. Uh, when the, when the owners are not there, but Turks, Turks and Caicos in particular seems to follow that model. You know, and it's very clear why. Uh, this is a very expensive destination to operate. It's it's sort of its best friend and its worst enemy. It, it becomes a filter in a way because we could never get inundated with low-end product because it just the math won't work. But the math also is very hard from an institutional investor standpoint because it is so expensive and to build and to operate in that if you do that, the hotel probably the day that you open it isn't worth what, you know, cash flow wise, it's not gonna value up to what it costs to build. So the condo hotel model has been a perfect balance for that where some of the capital comes back, somebody owns the room, they're happy to do that, it's a great investment, they can exit in and out mm -hmm. and makes the hotel numbers work. And so it's been, it's really the dominant model in Turks and Caicos to date. Yeah, I noticed that and I've been down here a few times now. The, um, you have the three, you have the Sands, your first one, you have the Palms, your second, and now here we're at the Shore Club, which is the newest that was uh, built, I believe, in tw 2017, right? Yeah, correct, we opened in, in 17. And uh, how has the progression been? It, what have you tried to do with each new resort? What's your, your strategy? you been? You know, I think uh, a real focus on the back of house, uh, uh, number one. I mean, we have underground tunnels in this resort. I saw that. Yeah, Karen showed me that. I was like, you, how do you have underground tunnels on an island? But you do it. We do. We actually built the site up five feet yeah. to do it. And uh, that you can go anywhere in this resort underground on a golf cart. And the idea being that, you know, we don't want to see things moving around above ground. We don't want to see maids carts and that kind of thing. So it's a commitment to the long-term strategy. I think that's been the big biggest progression for us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Sands is a beautiful, you know, sort of three and a half, four star property, wonderful. But, you know, it was the first in a learning curve. And then the Palms was a progression of that. And this was really full out. I mean, I think you'd be hard pressed, no matter which type of resort you're looking at, to see something that has the amenities and the back of house operational commitments that we put into this property. And you also decided to put this one on Long, Long, Long Bay Beach as yeah. opposed to Grace Bay, right? Correct. And very deliberately. Uh, I think that, you know, we 
we see there'll be some changes in the market positioning of Grace Bay, I think, over time and a uh, little more focus on density. And this was a very deliberate approach to having a much more boutique and residential feel to a property with lower, not, not overwhelming amounts of density, but a lot of detail, a lot of amenity here. Um, I, I fell in love with this side of the beach because I had a wonderful home on this beach. Mm -hmm. And I would come home every night and think there's really something different about this side. And, and I'm glad others are seeing the magic now. The resort's doing fantastic. No, it's a beautiful location. And if you're a kiteboarder, this is the place to be. I think I, there's a lot of great kiteboarders. We'd, I, I don't do it, but it's fun to watch them. This is uh, a veil, and this is like Aspen to people. I mean, people come from all over the world now to to, to kiteboard here because it's so fantastic. Yeah, I saw a few people who are trying to learn. And, and, uh, I, I'm not, I may be past that point for me, but now um, let's talk a little bit about how you handle the last 21 months of the pandemic. Obviously, you know, business kind of dried up, but what, what, what was the impact? Well, you know, I had hair when, when before the pandemic. Really? Yeah, look, look at what happened. But uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry about that. Or was that the COVID like me? <laughs> <laughs> no, look, it was, a, it was a, like anything like that. Uh, you come out of it, and if you, if you look deep enough, there's positives. I mean, look, we were in an unprecedented situation. But when I look back, I mean, I'm amazingly proud of the team. Uh, we had to rethink every day. Whatever you thought was the new landscape, and you made a new plan, it was expired within 48 hours and it was just a constant moving but one thing i will tell you is that in some ways uh, it's done a couple things i think it's made the staff really appreciate when we have customers now and and everybody's whatever you took for granted before you don't now but the other thing that's interesting is it's really made us realign where we put our resources um you know we, we really went back to zero base budgeting we think we do that every year but when you really close hotels you really rethink every bit of resource you put in so you did have to close these hotels right yeah we had to close them for four months now we still paid staff um we didn't we couldn't pay full pay but we did anywhere from 30 to 50 percent and in some cases we only deferred but <clears throat> it made everybody stop and rethink their department and how you're going to restack it and rebuild it and i think one thing i see is the resources that we're putting in i think are being much better utilized i think the guest is getting better value we're giving higher levels of service we're, the, wherever we thought we were wasting money, we're now putting it in better guest satisfaction. So I think we're a better hotel today. I really do. Hotel well, probably because you had some time to think about it and your, your staff had some time to think about it. And I got to tell you, the service is absolutely outstanding. Yeah. It's, it's really, uh, it's, it's an amazing, I mean, this operation is just really fantastic. Everybody's so friendly, uh, you know, and, and yes, they're all masked and they're all trying to do their best to meet the protocols, but they still give great service. Oh, that's awesome. You know, and not that I want to go through it again, but I can pull some some positives out of the pandemic so but no I think look very strong it proved a lot for the team and um, I see the team more cohesive now than even before now uh, you're somewhat known around here for your philanthropic activities in fact I think you won the humanitarian award for Turks and Caicos this year for 2021 was you know for the whole island was this a, a period that really where you needed some you know help they all everyone needed help at this point you know, you're, you're blessed when you have the opportunity to show what you're about, and, and that's the times that, you know, you don't look at those as, as obligations or burdens. They're actually, we really truly look at them as an opportunity, and, you know, no, no different than when we had hurricanes and big devast some devastation like that. We use that as an opportunity, and I can tell you it means a lot to the team afterwards, but that whole notion of being philanthropic is very much our corporate culture and I know everybody says they do that but I can tell you with our team it is deep in the core of what we do so you were philanthropic not only to the to the, your, your own staff but also to the community at large right yeah the the team loves you know and we also have a philosophy that the the charity efforts are really a way that we use as a team building tool mm -hmm. you know we forget that a lot of times staff that don't have the wealth that you know we take being able to be charitable for granted and when it makes us feel good you got to remember when you give a staff member a day off to go work at a charitable event or be part of something they're really rewarding for them and they really feel like they're doing it with their own team so we've used that very much as a team building tool as well mm -hmm. you know and it's, it's sort of ingrained in what we do so we're proud of that no, and you should be. Uh, it's, it's a, it was a hard period to get through, and uh, I think with your help, everyone got through it. Now, here we are. We're, we're, we're getting back in business. Uh, what does business look like for the rest of this year and into 2022? Strong. 
strong, strong. And I will tell you, uh, I was a bit nervous when we went to the vaccination only policy. We did have some attrition, of course, because if you have people in the stack and you pull out one sector, but I really think uh, I'm becoming more and more supportive of it. I, I, I'm not a anti or pro vaccine person, but I'm just speaking from a business level. I think it's adding a stability that we all appreciate. Uh, we don't want to be in an Austria situation where you're one minute, you're booming and then you got to close and then you're booming again. And so I think this is adding a lot of stability. So now we're watching the attrition fill back in very strongly and much more confidently. When we get a, a family booking now, we feel it's firm. They're, you know, they're not moving. They know the, already what the rules are. And so, uh, you know, look 20 uh 21 has been we're exceeding 2019 even with the year to date even with the hard first quarter mm. so that's impressive you know the pace that's had to take place to do that and now in 2022 at least from a pace standpoint mm. uh, we are probably 20 30 percent ahead of that's amazing that's amazing of 2019 right? yeah 2019 wow. and that was a good year <laughs> that's amazing so, and i do see i do see a lot of families here i gotta tell you yeah. so you know obviously the kids so far are not vaccinated because they can't be but i'm sure everybody else is complying and you know what i think guests feel safer they do and uh, we get a lot of feedback that look they they actually pick the destination because they know that and they also don't want to find out their vacation's been messed up i mean if it you know it, it's it's equally frustrating for the client when they find out two weeks before their vacation that the country's shutting down or doing a whole bunch of different mandates or or you know making people be back at the rooms at nine o'clock with curfews people don't want that so this adds stability and, and, re and some reliability to what we can provide. And yes, it means that there are some people that we can't service and we regret that, but you know, we, I think I'm, I'm always a fan of defining who you are and what the ground rules are, you know, both in our resorts and in terms of our, our policies going out. So I'm supportive of it right now. I, I really think that it's added some stability. I agree, and I think it has, and people, as I said, feel safer, they feel confident, uh, you're not gonna shut down, and look, it obviously hasn't hurt your business. No, it really hasn't. It hasn't, and we're watching it now come stronger than ever. So it's just taking a little time and patience. Let's talk a little bit about, um, you had this model that sort of been the Strix and Caicos model in a lot of several other islands, but yours here was to have sort of these condo resorts, and then, and then but now you're starting to get the brands coming in. You have Ritz-Carlton coming, coming in. I remember I was down here when it was being built, and I said, I don't know if that really fits here, but they're here. Uh, you had them on. Uh, are you having are other uh, chains coming in? Yeah, I think those, uh, I think the chains are watching very closely to see how Ritz does. You know, I don't want to be negative or positive. I think that uh, change is change. Uh, we look at it as an opportunity for us. Yeah. We're in a very high touch, very personal, very organic type of product for us. You know, when you come here, you feel like you've come to a family owned business. I mean, if there's a problem, you, you know, you're not just going up through some corporate chain to get it resolved. And and we plan on just continuing to be strong in that. And, well, and I was gonna ask you how you are gonna respond to this because obviously yeah. Ritz, and, and Amon's a smaller resort, but uh, you know, the Ritz, I, we saw it the other day and I said, oh, that's, that's tall actually, that's pretty yeah. big. Uh, and I remember seeing it and wondering how it was gonna affect all of these operations like yours I think you just you define yourself even more you communicate more you let travel professionals know the difference and why they should be here and you know they care about their clients and and ultimately we feel that that breeds an opportunity for us because it's going to create more attention to the island and that just means there's that much more of our segment that's there to be served so uh, we don't look at it as head-on competition per se I think that we've provide a different product and a different level of service and certainly I know that's the case and yeah we, the big guys are going to come in here but they're not really here yet and Turks and Caicos still has this very unique model that I think works for you yeah we're pretty proud of it yeah. now any plans for more resorts on this island or elsewhere in the Caribbean yeah, we have, uh, I've got 25 acres of land right next door here that, that literally adjoins to the Shore Club. And so we're, we're doing evaluations on that. The, the thing that is, is hardest thing to make a decision right now is on two things. The market has really switched very heavily to the villa. Um, model and we're, wanting, we're in one of your villas right one now. One of the villas right now. And, and that's really exploded in the last, you know, year. Now, 
part of that I think is a bubble, but part of it I don't believe is. I think that the one fundamental that has happened that I think is very interesting for the Caribbean and keeps me very excited um, is one the thing that will not fundamentally change regardless of markets, etc., is people realize now more than ever they can work remotely. If we thought we could do it before, even if you knew you could do it, it was felt a little unacceptable to do it. You didn't want to get on to a Zoom call with the whole corporation and they're like, where are you, Bob? Oh, I'm down and you know, oh, gee, must be nice, Bob. You know, but now it's so acceptable. Yeah. It is acceptable to throw on a, a shirt and sit at a Zoom and... Not necessarily and, pants, but that will go. Know, yeah, you don't need the <laughs> pants. But, you know, it's, it's acceptable. It's not deemed like, well, what are you doing? So, especially at the upper levels and, and, and high net worth individuals. So, I think there's a fundamental shift that's taking place where people are going to spend more time working away and taking advantage of it. And I think we all come out of this a little bit going, I need to rethink my time a little bit. I need to rethink what I do. And so I'm seeing that in the marketplace and I, I think it's here to stay for the next decade at least. Now, anything else you'd like to tell our travel advisors? We got about 95,000 out there about your, your properties and also about uh, booking Turks and Caicos today? Well, I, I think we really need to get down again to the core of what people are looking for. You know, th this this really ticks so many boxes. It really does. It's it's so close to get to. I mean, especially for private jet clients, but our airlift is amazing. I, and I look at that, and I still go out and look at a lot of other islands, but I see so few that have every box ticked. You know, from a weather standpoint, you know, compared to some of the upper island chains where really once you get to December and January and February, you may not get the weather that you're looking for, you know? Um, so we're a perfect balance, you know, US dollar, very safe, you know, English speaking, primary language. This is an island that I often say to people, I, I jokingly call it Caribbean light, because you know you're in the Caribbean, but you don't ever feel like when you get off a plane and go somewhere that anybody knows that you've been here 20 minutes. They don't know if you've been here two years, two weeks, two minutes, and they don't really care. They were just glad that you're here and you're having a good time. So I just found that there's this unbelievable relaxed ability to come here and not just vacation here for two weeks, but live here for two weeks. Mm -hmm. You you actually integrate into, into the community here in two weeks and you can take a car, drive around, rather than it feeling like a very sh chauffeured, canned vacation. This is one that you come down and I think that's why people get so attracted to Turks. They, they don't feel like they've just been sort of put into a line. They've come down, they've met people down at the restaurant and, and those kinds of things. So it's very interactive, very live very real. Um, is, this is not a canned experience for people. It's a real beautiful experience. And I totally agree. I mean, we went to the conch shack the other day, yeah. uh, which is, you know, reality. And, and you can come and you come back to this lovely resort and, and with the beautiful beach and the beautiful pools. So it really is a great vacation experience. And you do have your villas here too, so that you can bring larger groups down there. And we have seen a few, believe me. Stan, I want to thank you for taking the time. And again, thank you for your hospitality the last three days, Karen. Awesome. Well, look, we were excited that you were coming. So thanks for the time. I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report.